The basement seems like an unlikely place for a farm, but underneath New York City's Michelin-starred restaurant Atera, that's exactly what you will find. Forget sunshine and dirt, this high-tech farm uses LED lighting and hydroponics to grow its rare herbs and greens for some of New York's top restaurants. Joining us right now is Rob Lang. He's the founder and CEO of Farm One. And Rob, thanks for being here today. Yeah, great to be here. Uh, what's the feedback you get when people hear that you are growing high-quality food in the basements of some New York City uh, restaurants and buildings? People are surprised, yeah. um, but people are also really excited because how often do you get to visit a farm in the city? Okay, my first thought, honestly, was, ew, from the basement? I don't want anything that's down there where, like, the cockroaches and the rats are. Is that an issue or not? This farm is very different to a typical New York basement. Okay. It's very clean. Uh, we keep pests out. The room is sealed. Okay. Um, and hydroponics means that we're growing in a very clean environment with no pesticides or anything like that. Yeah, so, I, I was laughing about it. Like, I, I've yeah. actually, the hydroponics, when you go to Disney World, it's one of the great rides that you can go on in Epcot where they actually are growing all of that food. How, how did you get into this? Because, okay, now we're looking at it right there. And that does look like a, a very clean place. Yeah, so I got excited about this whole idea about three or four years ago when I just really got into food. And I went to farmer's markets and I discovered a whole bunch of ingredients that I'd never seen before. But then I would go back two weeks later and they were gone because of seasonality. Mm. So I was looking into technology that would allow us to grow interesting things year round in the middle of the city. And so three years ago, we started Farm One. We started with a small farm inside a culinary school. And now we have two in New York City, including the one underneath the Terra. A lot of your customers are high-end restaurants. Is Absolutely. that a surprise? I, I would guess this is a little expensive. Yeah, it's a premium product. I mean, if the chefs are not getting the product from us, they're having it shipped in from California or even further afield. And so it's an expensive product that often they're not getting good quality if they're shipping it in from so far away. Uh, so they're excited about having it in the middle of the city. And at this point, we now have over 20 Michelin stars among our customers. So it's pretty high end stuff. How much stuff do you grow? We grow about 100 different things at any one time. Um, and about a thousand pounds of produce every month. Wow. Yeah. W what's the limitations for you? Is it simply space? Space is at a premium, as we know in New York City. Um, you know, within that space, we try to maximize our per square foot yield. Um, and really, you know, we've, we've got the farm up to a really efficient point and everything we, we grow is to order. So there's not a lot of waste, which is great for environmental impact as well. What's the biggest surprise you've seen since you got into it? Wow. Uh, I mean, building a brick and mortar business in New York City is tough. Yeah. You know, the air conditioning can break, you know, all kinds of things can go wrong. But one of the really delightful things is just working with all these chefs because they're so creative. And so bringing them fresh product, they get excited, they'll put it straight on the menu um, and we get great feedback from them. You brought some stuff in with you and yeah. these all look beautiful. They look like flowers. I mean, do you grow actual like carrots and tomatoes? And we stuff don't like grow that? heavy vegetables or fruits like that. Um, uh -huh. These pink I'm ones. I'm this pink one because they look so pretty. Yeah, these are big. Eat all these flowers? Yeah, these are begonia flowers. Some people call them apple blossoms because you'll try and you'll get like a little tart, sour flavor from that. Hmm. It's pretty good, right? That's really good. Yeah. And what a lot of people don't realize about edible flowers is they can have a lot of flavor as That's well. It's delicious. It does taste like an apple. What is, yeah. what is this one? I'm trying this to one's know. called Nepotella. Uh, so Nepo try a little what? Nepotella. Try a little flower. I'll, I'll pick okay. you one there. Yeah. Just a teeny tiny one? Yeah. So okay. try one of those. Um, so this is a Tuscan herb which has a minty aroma, mm. minty taste as well. That's really good too. Yeah, really These are good. delicious. Yeah, and chefs love them because they bring color to a plate, uh, but also flavor. So they've I got was, that I was laughing. I was, gonna, I was gonna say I wasn't eating flowers, but I'm gonna eat all of these. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they're great. What's the yellow one? Uh, this is called wood sorrel. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a type of oxalis. And oh, that'll, what? oxalis. So oxalis is a type of plant that has oxalic acid in it, mm -hmm. which brings it a nice tart flavor. So a chef might use that in the same way they might use a lemon juice or a vinegar That's to brighten up a dish. Too. Yeah. Rob, thank you.